This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today's Bible reading is taken from the book of Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. And I read in Jesus' name. Paul and Timothy, servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Jesus Christ who are in Philippi, including the overseers and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God for every remembrance of you, always praying with joy for all of you in my every prayer because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Indeed, it is right for me to think this way about all of you, because I have you in my heart, and you are all partners with me in grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how deeply I miss all of you with the affection of Jesus Christ. I pray this, that your love will keep on growing in knowledge and in every kind of discernment, so that you may approve the things that are superior and may be pure and blameless in the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually advanced the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is because I am in Christ. Both, most, of, most of the brothers have gained confidence in the Lord from my imprisonment and dare even more to speak the word fearlessly. To be sure, some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. These preach out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel and others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely thinking that they will cause me trouble in my imprisonment. What does this matter? Only that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is proclaimed, and in this I rejoice. Yes, I will continue to rejoice, because I know this will lead to my salvation through your prayers and help from, from the Spirit of Jesus Christ. My eager expectation and hope is that I will not be ashamed about anything, but now and always, with all courage, Jesus Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Now, if I live on in the flesh, this means fruitful work for me and I don't know which one I shall choose. I am torn between the two. I long to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. Since I am persuaded of this, I know that I remain and continue with you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that because of my coming to you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus may abound. Just one thing, as citizens of heaven, live your life worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or am absent, I will hear about you, that you are standing firm in one spirit, in one accord, contending together for the faith of the gospel, not being frightened in any way, by your opponents. This is a sign of destruction for them, but of your salvation, and this is from God. For it has been granted to you on Christ's behalf, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him, since you are engaged in the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, our Lord and our God, I want to thank you for 
your word this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to learn at your feet, to hear you speak to us. Almighty Father, we ask that you come and make us teachable. Open the eyes of our understanding to see, Lord, to see you, to hear you clearly. Help us to accept your word, which you speak to us today. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, come and break down this world in a way that we we'll understand. In the name of Jesus Christ, at the end of it, Lord, let all the glory come to you. Father, I pray for myself that you shield me, you protect me, you speak to me, you speak through me. In the name of Jesus, I dis- I, I I completely give in to your will and your word today and your direction. Help me to not to speak out of the flesh, but to hear clearly from you. And to speak what you deposit in my heart. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so we just read Philippians chapter 1. And that chapter of the Bible was talking about um, Paul. That was Paul um, and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, who were, you know, imprisoned. You know, Paul went through a lot for the gospel. He went through a whole lot for the gospel. But he was happy knowing that everything that he was doing was for the gospel. And he says, as long as the name of Jesus Christ is proclaimed, that's that's okay. That's, that's That's the purpose. That's the mission here. And it didn't matter to him that he was going through all that he went through. Praise the name of the Lord. So first of all, he was giving thanks. He was giving thanks and prayer, praying for, you know, the children of God, the people who were taking the gospel out to different nations as we have been commanded to do. And it's so, um, it's so encouraging when you read the account of Paul in the Bible, because, you know, even as Christians in this age and this time, we go through all sorts of persecution as well. The church is still going through persecution. But when you read the accounts of Paul and you see and hear what he went through, we are encouraged even the more. Because we know that the purpose is for Christ. It's for the gospel. Praise the Lord. That what you're going through, the hate, the seclusion, you know, is for the gospel. And it's okay as long as the name of Christ He's been proclaimed. Praise the name of the Lord. So, you know, he was saying here that, you know, you're advancing the gospel. And there are people, he was just categorizing different people that were doing the things they did. Some for malicious reasons. He says here, some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry. That's verse 15. Some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others preach Christ out of goodwill. Right? It says, These preach out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel, and others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, thinking that they will cause me trouble in my imprisonment. So there were this set of people that were preaching Christ to torment Paul, to cause him trouble, not because they wanted to preach Christ, not because they wanted people to be saved, but because they wanted to put Paul in trouble. And so they were preaching the gospel. But he says here, that's okay. What does it matter? Only that in every way, whether from the false motives or from true motives, Christ is being proclaimed. Mission accomplished. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There are people in your life who come to see to to see you they seemingly come to felicitate with you when you have good news or something happening in your life not because they're rejoicing with you but they just want to come and see they just want to come and see there are people who are waiting their position waiting for your downfall waiting for your very tiny mistake fault finders they're waiting to find a fault in you. They come to you and you see them and you think they're happy with you. But they're looking for a fault. They're waiting for you to take the, the next wrong step. So they laugh at you. 
praise the name of the Lord. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Not everybody around you is happy for you. Not everybody that is saying congratulations is truly, truly happy for you. There are people around you who have come. They come for your party. They come to say congratulations because every other person is coming. And they can just hide in the crowd and come and say congratulations. But their motives are different. Their heart is very different from what you see on the surface. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's why we have to be very careful as children of God. As children of God. Praise the Lord. And that's why sometimes I'm concerned when I see, you know, children of God um, go on social media and post every single thing, every single part of your life, every single thing. It's okay. Social media is good. You, you socialize. You get to see what's happening in the lives of people, your loved ones and all of that. But sometimes it gets to a point of abuse. There's some things that you keep to yourself. I've said it so many times here. There's some things that you keep to yourself. There's some things that you share. There's some things that you share. You know, wisdom is profit profitable to direct. And may God grant us wisdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Because not everybody is happy for you. Not everybody. They might come and smile with you and say congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Oh my God, I'm so happy for you. And all of that. But their heart is something. Is saying something totally totally different praise the name of the lord hallelujah so he says here my expectation and hope is that i will not be ashamed about anything but that now as always will be more will with all courage christ will be highly honored in my body whether in life or in death so at this point paul was not bothered whether he died or, st or stayed alive he didn't bother about that. He says, I want to go. He says, for me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. So whether I'm alive, I'm preaching Christ. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I'm representing Christ. I'm spreading the gospel. I'm, I'm just proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. If I'm alive. But to die is gain. Because I get to be with Jesus. I get to be with the gospel himself. I get to be with the master, the message himself. Praise the name of the Lord. And this is beautiful. He, he wasn't afraid of death. As a lot of us are today. He says no. So I'm, I'm actually torn. I'm torn between the two. I long to depart to be with Christ. Which is far better. Far better to be with Christ. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. This one was sure, more than sure, that it was going to make heaven. Because he lived his life for Christ. He lived his life. He had come to that point where, you know, he had seen that this is just, this world is, you know, this is not home. This world is not home for us Christians. It's not home for me. That is why when we live our lives, we must live our lives for Jesus Christ. We must live our everyday lives for him. Keep proclaiming, proclaiming his name. Keep advancing the gospel in any medium, any platform, any way possible. Keep proclaiming because we are only here for a moment. A couple of days ago, I saw in social media that... Um, you know, a friend, someone I used to know, had passed. A very young guy had passed. Very, very young guy. He was a, a gospel artist, a praise worship leader. He had passed. You know, yes, we're going to miss him terribly. I mean, just seeing that alone, seeing the obituary, a very young guy at 37. But I believe that he lived his life for Christ, he proclaimed the gospel. He used his gifts to worship, to praise, to advance the kingdom. And I believe, I believe that he's in a better place. I believe he's in heaven. He lived his life for Christ. We ought to live our lives for Christ. We have to live our lives for Christ. Because you don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know when it's going to happen. 
and you want to have that assurance that when it does happen, you're going to spend your life in eternity, eternal bliss, and the place that He, Christ, has gone to prepare for you and for me. Praise the Lord. And so Paul was already so excited. He said, look, I want to go. I really want to go. And, you know, because to be with Christ is far, far better for me. But for your sake. But I remain in the flesh. But to remain in the flesh, sorry, is more necessary for your sake. Because the more he stays, the more he's going to encourage them, encourage us as Christians and then advance the gospel even more. Praise the name of the Lord. He says, since I am persuaded of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and your joy in faith. So that because, because of my coming to you again, your boasting in Christ may abound. So he lived his life for the saints. He lived his life for Christ, for the mission that Christ had commissioned, commissioned his children, his disciples to do. Praise the name of the Lord. And this is just what we should be doing as Christians in your everyday lives, in our everyday lives. Let's make Jesus Christ the center, the purpose. Let's advance the kingdom. Let's live our lives for Christ. Let's proclaim the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the soon coming King. That's what he expects of us. That's what he expects of us. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So that we have a confident expectation. As Paul did. He was very confident. His expectation was that if he died today. He's going to make heaven. And I believe strongly. That he's with Christ right now as we speak. To reign and rule with Christ. As Christ has promised us. Praise the name of the Lord. What a life. What a beautiful life spent for God, completely sold out to Christ. And this is my desire for myself. Not just for myself, but for my loved ones, my family, and for everyone listening to this podcast. And every child of God out there that will be sold out to Christ completely. Sold out to Him. No fear, no competition, no fear of death. Because when you're sold out to Him, there's no fear of death. When it happens, it happens. That's what you say to yourself. Like when it happens, it happens. Because I know that I'm going to rule and reign with Christ. Because I'm sold out to Him. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. May this be our stand in Christ. May we have this confident expectation. That should it happen today, we'll reign and rule with Jesus Christ. We'll make heaven. Praise the Lord. That's the ultimate. After everything is said and done on this earth, the ultimate the ultimate price, the ultimate goal is to make heaven. To make heaven. And may Jesus Christ help us and welcome us when the time comes. May we receive that welcome. Welcome son, welcome child. Thou good and faithful servant. May this be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, eternal rock of ages, we thank you for your word today. We thank you because the entrance of your word always brings light and understanding. This morning we have heard your word today, O oh God. You have told us to be sold out to you, to advance the kingdom, advance the gospel in every way, every medium, every medium possible. Lord, we ask for the spirit of obedience that the words we have heard today will not fall on dry soil will not fall on deaf ears but that we will be doers as we have heard your word this morning that will take up this mantle will take up this charge and we begin to live our lives for you we begin to proclaim and declare your name all over the world in the name of jesus with every time every breath we have lord that we begin to speak to people we begin to proclaim we begin to declare father the name of our lord jesus christ that your work in us, Father, will not be in vain. The finished work of Calvary for us will not be in vain. The blood that was shed for us will not be in vain. We'll take our place. We'll take our place in you today. And we'll stand as true representatives of Christ here on earth till he comes. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, child of God, there you have it. Go out there. 
and keep proclaiming the gospel, keep declaring the name of Jesus Christ to all, everybody that cares to listen. On your social media, on your at work, on the bus, on the train, everywhere you go, always, always proclaim the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and advance the gospel. And God bless you as you do so. Have a great day. Bye-bye.